going to do? You want to season with the crispy lines? Fade it away like a jump shot. Leave a little bit on top of it. Make it short of the size like a rocket man. Or you can make it go up with a full hawk. Trim up this beard. Mix it in with some color and sponge it around. If you're feeling kind of different, we like it. Pick it out, even it up. Take it back to the 70s with the lady crow. Maybe cut it down and shape it nice. Make the taper right. Have it sitting real low. I can put it on the left. I can put it on the right. In the back. Style. And when I'm done with you, you'll be walking down the block Having all the ladies running wild, cause I'm the baddest He's the baddest barber around, but don't you know that he's the baddest barber around in the town Ain't nobody, ain't nobody Throw it down like the dark, the best barber Cause if you ask around, around Folks will tell you who's the man in the town who really holds the crown Cause if you're the baddest in the town Shall be my guide. Hey fam, what's going on today? Got a couple of new watches, ray bands, and some blue. My name is Will Liverman, and I'm the composer, and also playing the role of, of Mike in the factotum. Creating this project has been, I mean, it started out as like a, a passion project. I did the Ryan Opera Center program with Lyric Opera and I finished in 2015. Um, and when I started working professionally, I was performing uh, The Barber of Seville by Rossini a lot. And I, you know, as I was sitting there like on the road, I was like, man, it would be kind of a cool idea to sort of take Barber of Seville and update it into a black barber shop. So I thought it would be an interesting idea to, to, to take, uh, you know, the idea of the story of Barbara Seville and update it with black musical styles, like styles that I know and love, like gospel, uh, funk, uh, trap, hip hop, R&B. So, you know, utilizing those styles and also merging the classical voice and fusing, you know, both of those worlds together to create this. And so that was sort of the, the inspiration behind it all. What's going on, Rocket Jackson? So, go by K Rico. I'm a DJ, producer, and artist. We were singing at the Met, and I was in New York, and he had hit me like, yo, I have this opera idea about a black barbershop. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, I love your voice, let's write it. And we would just collaborate, come up with the characters and the different types of styles we want to bring to it, and just, you know, have fun and play around in the studio for out like, like 2, 3 a.m. This is like 2018, and then it just kept developing. When I heard that he was doing this, he, sh he played some for me in Santa Fe, and I thought this was like the most genius idea because <laughs> there aren't a lot of contemporary comedies in the opera form, like period. And to have a contemporary comedy that's essentially about like a black experience is also the coolest thing ever. So I came on board as sort of like a third voice in the story room. And then in 2019, we, we did a demo with some other singers and bringing in more people and seeing like, you know, what that vibe was and just hearing, you know, other classical singers sing the music that we were creating. After the pandemic hit, things shut down. I had a lot of gigs lined up that were just pff, completely gone. You know, well, I got all this time in my hands, like let's really get after the factotum and finish it and, you know, really see where we can take this thing. And then at the same time, Lyric lost their uh, season and they're looking for alternative programming. And we, we had the demos, we had everything ready to go. It's like, yeah, sure, you know, like, take a listen and you know see what you think and then you know they got back with us and they're like yeah we'd love to you know do a workshop of this for you guys and um, and that's how that came to be with with Lyric. And when George Floyd happened for me it was just extra motivation in general like there's not a lot of black representation in opera so that, that's why we're here you know what I'm saying just to like really tell our stories and, and really break down these barriers that shouldn't have been up in the first place. Um, Anything else we need to chat about while we've got all of us gathered. I don't think so. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We're going to have a good time. Yeah, definitely. Sixty-four. I'm not saying the last note. Or you could even repeat at the end. Just give it time. Like uh, give it time. One more. Uh, you could say give it time at the end if you wanted. You know, as a as a different instead of ooh. You know, you could just say. Uh, to end it with that, give it time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. How 
can I be so torn on by him? And some things still feel as off. I used to feel so safe with him, but lately I feel it. We want everyone to be successful in this show. And so like this workshop is gonna teach us about the singers, like if, you know, when they're like, oh, this part might be a little bit too high. All right, let's rewrite this and see something that, you know, works for you. Or if they have ideas like, hey, what if we do this? Like, I'm feeling this. Oh God, no, hell, yeah, but that, yeah, that's wrong, yeah. There's usually musical workshops and then dramatic workshops of a piece. And what's really nice about this one is that it focuses so specifically on the music. And also, like, if Will wants to make a text change, that can be another huge objective of a workshop is, like, to change the language that you use so that people can understand it easier. I mean, it's, it's all collaborative at the end of the day. Because the opera, opera singers are, like, some of the best trained singers in the world, right? And so if you, if you match that level of training right, with the story that we're telling, you know what I'm saying? And if I can connect to them to, to, to let them be their full selves, you know what I'm saying? Like to just bear it all out, you dig know what I'm saying? Like I feel like the musicality in that, you know what I mean? It's gonna be a different thing that I wasn't even really thinking about before this week. It's amazing to see the progress when people feel more comfortable with the music, they add their own things to it. Um, and make it even better and just elevating uh, the music and taking it off the page and making it theirs. For me, it's so special because it's about family and community. Will was in our program and in the Ryan Opera Center, we're so, again, proud of what he has accomplished. And to put together a group of outstanding, marvelous singers, including some that are currently in our program, some outstanding alumni, and then also some lyric family members, people that are in the chorus that are gifted, gifted musicians in their own right. Is the light at the end of the tunnel? We're searching through the dark. But if we stick together, we're gonna make it. We shall overcome. Ain't nobody really care about us. We don't always, in the actual opera house, get to fine tune these genre blending experiments. And so it's nice to have the time and the structure of a regular opera workshop, rehearsal kind of time. When you get new music, you're literally the first person to touch it, which is exciting. And it means you get to do it different every single day if you want to. Obviously, this has not been the best time for many of us, but also it gives you the time to be available and to work on a lot of things that you might not have had the opportunity to do if this pandemic did not happen. I feel like the thing I've been most looking forward to and wanting to has already happened. Just to be able to make music in a room of more than one person. And for me, that's sort of been I'm hoping we can get back to that and to just have us there and all of the safety protocols in place and to be able to sit there with like six people and make amazing music. The sound booths that we have are awesome. We have in-ear monitors that, that, um, that let us listen to the whole feed, the whole track of everybody, so that also helps. But it has its own set of challenges, that physical, personal connection we're not allowed to have because of distancing, which makes making music a little difficult. You know, it was a little difficult to kind of find the blend, to kind of find the groove, but with the help of, you know, the electronic equipment and the lightheartedness and fun giving spirit that is Craig Terry, I felt things really just came together and we found a new groove in this new normal. Yeah. yeah. Come on, so we do it one more time just to get coordination. Could you it's so weird that you're so far apart. Oh my I God. Know. <laughs> but you know what? I'm grateful that you're here. So that's where, that's where we are. Let me wrap you in my arms. My arms. Wrap me in your arms. Let me feel.
you know, it's exciting for me. It's refreshing to step back in this theater again. For me, it's revitalizing to be in the hallways and in the dressing rooms. And so when you're back, it's even more exciting than you would have anticipated. All the um, well, moving parts are there, and once uh, once the beat drops in a certain spot, you know it's going to be it's going to be exciting. Different level of, of of artistry that the singers tap into when you're on the stage and you can see the house. You know what I'm saying? See all the all the lights, all the seats. You know what I mean? Then it's like, oh, you know, got to perform better. You know, which is dope. Um, and I think that that translated on the recording. That's my fault. That's my fault. I, I caught I y'all in. Can we do that acapella one time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me as a composer, you know, we, I have nerves. You know, we're all like kind of feeling this out together for the first time. You know, everyone's learned their parts individually, but then it's another thing to, you know, to walk into a place like Lyric and we're all, you know, here together for the first time and feeling things out. I just want it to be, you know, just a good time and people just like really enjoying themselves, you know, because it's it's black music, you know, it's music that, you know, we know and grew up with that people know and so like just enjoying what that is because it's, you know, it's, it's really different, you know, to be kind of singing, you know, classically in these styles uh, that we, you know, listen to all the time. At the end of the day, like I said, it's all music, you know what I'm saying? It's all the same 12 notes, it's all the same rhythms, especially after notating this music, it's like, oh, it's the same. <laughs> it's the same thing. I found it very relaxing. Because I said, oh, this is something different. This is not a Mozart piece, Rossini, or anything. This is a Will Litterman piece. There's, there's elements of gospel, there's hip hop. And uh, I don't know, it's just, just fun. At the beginning, I said, oh my gosh, I don't know if I will be in the same level of all my colleagues. Now I feel more comfortable, more confident, because I really love this, this style of music. It's not completely operatic. It makes many, many styles, and I love it. For me to just shift away from opera for a moment to something different, it's not even gospel sometimes. <laughs> I'm trying so hard, and Craig is very helpful, and Will is also like very um, motivational. kind of felt at home, you know. It felt like music that we are used to hearing and, and singing and, and hearing on the radio and performing. Um, also juxtaposed on top of that, always an amazing experience to come together with specifically black and Latino artists, because we know that doesn't happen a lot uh, in the opera world. So any, any chance we get to perform with colleagues, it always feels like family. <laughs> I love that we have, you know, lots of different accents, whether they're geographical or whether they're language things, because that's what humanity is. That's what opera should be. I can't remember many times in this room that we rehearsed other projects that there weren't many languages being spoken. Hearing that in an opera house with a black cast, you dig what I'm saying? Like, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's just really powerful to like be able to witness that. It hasn't really hit me. I think I'm going to take away the pleasure of performing again and learning how to not take performance for granted. Giving the public a positive, upbeat look on African-American culture. It just shows the positive things of just being Black in America and also just being Black, period. As opera moves forward, as it must and as it should, this is just the kind of project, I think, that will propel us forward. It's incredibly special, and I think that's what our audiences will find when they finally get to see it. I, I think this is going to have huge life. It's going to have a huge life on its own, and I'm just so thrilled to be a part of it and honored. This is like just the beginning. You know, this is 
what I call like our first like big step into getting it, you know, produced and on stage and, you know, uh, getting a full run of it. So what happens after this is taking what we've learned from what the singers have done, the tremendous things that they've done, uh, rewriting some things, taking a listen at the recording and, you know, just finding ways to make it better. I, I think this really solidifies the greatness of the piece and then that will let us, you know, get the orchestration for the next workshop, you know, rewrite some stuff um, and really, really get it like really, really solid. And then on stage, whenever stage is open back up. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna try both ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> BA. As soon as the day starts to grind, don't start. Tupac all lies on me, cause baby, I'm the man in the block. Hustling the clock, it's Mario World, and chasing these coins to give what I got, cause it's knock knock. Pick up the whole hood and shut it from the rooftops, and I'm sending my boy to cottage. So I'll run and tell your mama, he'll be the first one to do it like Michelle and Obama. After the suffering, the pain, disappointment, and drama, we got prosperity, victory, legacy, legacy, progress. Today, only the bass will turn it up so you can hear it bopping. Ain't that something, my son? Isaiah strutting on campus, I feel like I'm stunning. So make way for my young black king, cause ready or not, man, we can. Cause I remember when the teachers and principals wrote him off quick and he dropped out of school. I remember when he wanted to quit and he joined the wrong crowd and he thought he was cool. Like two rams on the Discovery Channel, we bombed his man, I thought I was through. But then he learned and he grew. It took a whole village, but we got him in the 